Let's have a closer look at the new Ferrari 296 GT3. There are lots of nice design features on the road car and the race car took it a few steps further. Let's start with the overall concept. The 296 is the successor of popular mid-engine Ferraris like 458 and 488. These aluminium structure cars used to have V8 engines in the past. Now Ferrari changed to a 120 degree V6 engine. Why 120 degree? Because a 4-stroke engine needs two full revolutions to get all four strokes done. So that is 720 degree. Divided by six cylinders, there is an ignition gap of 120 degree. And if the following cylinder is physically sitting at 120 degree further, I can save additional material and hence weight. Previously, manufacturers produced 6, 8 and 10 cylinder engines always with 90 degree bank angle, because they could use the same production machines. For the engine, that meant that they either had an uneven firing gap or they needed a heavier crankshaft to correct the angle. Now, it's all about efficiency and manufacturers stop producing engines with lots of cylinders. Hence, they can now focus on smaller 6-cylinder engines and optimize them. This 120-degree bank angle also offers lots of space inside the V and not so much outside for exhaust primaries. So Ferrari decided to turn the heads around and position both turbochargers inside the V. We can even see that these primaries look like they are trying to create a kind of rotation on the way to the turbocharger. Good thing about this arrangement is that the exhaust has now a pretty straight way towards the back and less turns than previously, which helps with power output. Interesting is also that the fuel pressure on the injectors of this engine now reaches an impressive 345 bar. If we look at the overall shape of the car, we can see that it's very clean. No unnecessary intakes and a very smooth shape, which is the perfect basis for a GT3 car. With the experiences of their last GT3 cars, Ferrari focused on optimizing the center of gravity and serviceability. A low COG helps to get a better balance if you need to add ballast under BOP conditions. And the car is very much simplified, so it's easier to repair during races. Part of this is also that the GT3 car features a large water radiator in the middle. The main inlet can catch the highest pressure and there is a huge area to exit. The sides are closed and Ferrari uses large canals to produce downforce and vortices along the sides to support wheel arch extraction. Like always at Ferrari, the center of the splitter is raised dramatically to get more air underneath the car and to stabilize downforce under braking. The louvers on the front wheel arches are extremely high and have an additional gurney flap on the first element. The structure behind the front wheel is cut back to allow better exit. To not catch this low energy air, the rear inlets for the intercoolers are positioned higher and the wing shaped mirror stays help to guide clean air to the inlet and keep the front wheel weight down. It looks like these inlets also include the engine intakes. The Naker duct at the back could be for rear brake cooling. The back of the 296 is special because it doesn't have such a down sloping rear window anymore. This provides a large surface for air to produce lift and by using a flat cover the car can increase downforce. To reduce the wake behind the car a bit, there is a top inlet that blows air into that wake. The rear wing is held by two very slim down swan neck mountings that are reinforced at the areas with highest stress. At the back, it seems strange that a mid-engine car with a gearbox behind the engine can have such a large diffuser. Usually the center is always compromised by the low-hanging longitudinal gearbox, not here. Instead of using the large 8-speed dual-clutch gearbox with integrated hybrid system, the GT3 version uses a transversal 6-speed extract gearbox, which is so compact that the diffuser looks like there is no gearbox. At the sides, the diffuser uses strakes to keep the tire squirt outside. Remarkable are also the split lines of the bodywork. Ferrari themselves say the car is now built like a prototype, which helps them to repair the car quickly if needed. They can take the whole front or rear off in seconds and also suspension parts are now optimized for quick repairs, rather than being compromised by the production car. 
So all in all, the 296 is a very good basis for the next generation GT3 car of the successful 488. The race car uses the experiences of the past, focuses on weaknesses and broad innovations to the track. How do you like the 296 GT3? Let me know in the comments below.